With the world population being denser than ever before, we should, in theory, never be lonely. But as we all know, loneliness is still very much alive and well. We have all encountered loneliness or are currently battling loneliness. It's normal to be lonely from time to time, but that doesn't really make it feel any better. Loneliness can become difficult to talk about because everyone experiences it differently and there are depths to it. So today we're discussing the different types of loneliness, what they mean and how we can break out of them. Understanding the different levels of loneliness is like having a map. It helps you figure out why you're feeling lonely and what you can do about it. Level 1. Situational the first level of loneliness is situational loneliness. This is the loneliness you feel when your circumstances are making you lonely. Either you live too far from friends or family, or your work doesn't give you time to see anyone, or there's a virus keeping everyone locked inside. You feel lonely, but you know in a wider sense, you aren't alone. You know that your friends, family, and romantic partners will be there when the opportunity arises. The problem with situational loneliness is sometimes the situation doesn't come to an end, or it lasts an extraordinarily long time. That feeling of loneliness can start to fester. It can snowball into depression, and at some point, you might feel like you really are alone. Spending time alone is great for self-reflection and emotional regulation, but spending time with people, particularly people we care about, reduces stress and gives us a sense of purpose and meaning. We found a lot of ways to cope with this type of loneliness during the pandemic. Spending an hour socializing with the people you love online can make you feel less lonely and will remind you that you aren't alone. Level 2. Social Loneliness Social loneliness happens when you feel isolated because you lack a broad social network or engaging social interactions. It's not just about missing deep emotional connections, but rather feeling disconnected from a larger group of friends or acquaintances. This is about feeling disconnected from a broader social network or lacking meaningful social interactions. You might have acquaintances or be around people but still feel like you don't belong or have deep connections. It's more about the quantity and quality of your social interactions. It's feeling like your social life is lacking. It's like having a bunch of acquaintances but no one you really connect with or feel close to. This kind of loneliness shows how important it is to have a mix of meaningful social interactions and a sense of belonging to a group. The best thing to do would be to be sociable if you can. Try to make connections wherever you are and keep an open mind. There is always a way out of loneliness. You don't need a lot of friends. Just having one friend to confide in prevents mental health issues, improves your overall mental well-being, and provides support and companionship. Level 3. Emotional Loneliness But what if you're surrounded by loved ones but still feel lonely? Maybe it's because you feel they don't really know the real you. Maybe you have to suppress yourself to keep everyone happy and that just makes the loneliness worse. Sound familiar? We don't define loneliness as being alone. This is because loneliness is more of an emotional state than a physical one. Emotional neglect is a level of loneliness in which you have people in your life and yet it feels like you go unseen and unheard. It feels like they just don't care. This involves feeling a lack of a deep, intimate connection or emotional bond with someone. It's about missing that close, personal relationship where you feel truly understood and connected. Emotional loneliness is more about the depth of your relationships rather than the number of people you interact with. But it doesn't have to be that way. Just because certain people were dismissive doesn't mean everyone will be. For example, when we feel like our parents neglect our emotions, we turn to our close friends or romantic partners. According to a study by psychologist Dr. Josie Geller and colleagues, when people make time and space for you and are compassionate towards you, it can help you feel empowered, validated, and uplifted. Having people who care about you can help prevent other mental health concerns from arising. Our emotional well-being often goes unnoticed because we don't address it or talk about it. So try to ensure that the people in your life understand the way you feel. Level 4. Chronic Loneliness When things seem hopeless, we find ourselves in the agonizing, seemingly unending, chronic loneliness. Most of us will never experience this kind of loneliness. This loneliness represents every level of loneliness, extended over time and stretched to every corner of your life. In other words, you haven't had friends or a relationship for many years 
and you most likely don't have many, if any, family members to rely on. This usually occurs later in life. Chronic loneliness also often comes from a mix of things, like feeling isolated, struggling with emotional barriers, going through big life changes, dealing with mental health issues, societal pressures, and health problems. If you are chronically lonely, there needs to be a huge change in your life, like a change in career or living situation. Chronic loneliness isn't limited to older age brackets, as younger people can experience it. Again, if you are emotionally, romantically, and socially lonely for long enough, you may find yourself chronically lonely. For teenagers and young adults, this is devastating, as this is usually the time in their life when they socialize the most. Researchers found that while the likelihood of being chronically lonely at a young age is low, it isn't impossible, and with that possibility comes the increased likelihood of suicide. If you believe you are at risk of being chronically lonely, we urge you to please consider the various methods of breaking out of loneliness. Even if you don't realize it, you are loved. Remember, the time you feel lonely is the time you most need to be by yourself. Life's cruelest irony, Douglas Coupland, Shampoo Planet. Sometimes that time we spend on our own is necessary but painful. We use loneliness to reflect on ourselves. Just as we physically grow when we sleep, we mentally and emotionally grow when we are alone. But for so many, loneliness is more than that. It is a lingering pain. It breeds resentment and it reminds us of how incomplete we are. Breaking the cycle of loneliness is not a simple task. It requires a lot from you. You may have to leave your comfort zone. You may have to undertake big risks, but it will always be worth it. Because in a world of 8 billion people, no one should be lonely. Are you feeling stuck and none of the solutions we suggested are speaking to you? We highly recommend speaking to a professional and getting personalized guidance from someone familiar with your situation. Do you have any experience with getting out of loneliness? You could help a lot of people by sharing your experience in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to Psych2Go for more videos like this. See you next time Psych2Goers.